Hey everyone, welcome to our real interview experience series. As you know, we share our subscribers' interview experience here. So one of our subscribers, Umesh Samal, recently cracked Java developer interview at Negero. So in this video, I am gonna share everything about his experience, what he shared with me. Okay. And guys, if you have attended any interview recently, then fill the form in the description. We will reach out to you. You can choose to share your name or share your experience anonymously. We are also giving gift cards to the participants. So don't miss out and don't forget to subscribe to catch more videos like this. So now let's get started. So he applied through LinkedIn for a role open from three to five year of experience and he is having four year of experience in total. After applying, he received a link for online assessment test and that was having basic coding questions and aptitudes. So one hour 45 minutes was given for this test and there was no negative marking. After this assessment, there were two technical rounds. So I will discuss each round one by one. In the first technical round, interviewer was asked to explain some concepts introduced in Java 8. So Java 8 introduced features like lambda expressions for cleaner code, streams for processing data, optional to avoid null values, default methods, interfaces, and date time API for better data handling and improving code efficiency and also reliability. Then interviewer asked difference between lambda expressions and method reference with examples. A lambda expression is an anonymous function used to implement functional interfaces. It provides a concise way to pass behavior as a parameter, whereas a method reference is a shorthand that points to an existing method. It is used when a lambda expression only calls a method. Okay. Then he asks a difference between map and map to object with example. So map transforms elements in a stream and returns stream. Whereas map to object converts primitive streams into stream objects. We should use map for general transformation and map to object for converting primitive to objects. Then he asked to write Java code to find first non-repetitive character using Java stream API. So I will provide a solution link for this program in the description below. And then he asked to write a Java code to find the largest continuous sequence in an array which sums to zero. So I will provide a solution link of this program as well in the description. Okay. And then he asked what is the use of a Spring Boot application annotation. So Spring Boot application annotation combines configuration, enable auto configurations and component scan annotation. It simplifies Spring Boot application setup by enabling auto configuration, component scanning and defining beans. It reduces boilerplate code and makes application configurations easier. Then interviewer asked difference between IOC container and application context. So IOC container manages object creation and dependency injection whereas application context is a more advanced version providing additional features like event propagation, internationalization and AOP support. Application context extends bean factory making it more powerful for enterprise applications. Then they asked to explain the implementation of JOT token. So JOT stands for JSON Web Token. It has three parts, header, payload and signature. The server generates and signs a token, sends it to the client and verifies it on the future request. It is used for authentication in stateless applications. Then he asked to explain the significance of signature in JOT token. So the signature in JOT token ensures it integrity and authenticity. It is generated using a secret key and verifies that the token was not modified. If the signature is invalid, the token is considered tempered or invalid. Before moving ahead, guys, I would like to share one important thing with you. Actually, we had launched complete interview preparation material, structure step by step by myself, expert and MNC's interviewers. And the best part is that now no one need to go anywhere else to prepare interviews. Uh, there is a 99% chance that interviewers will ask questions from this material. So basically, it contains a lot of material categorized by experience level means each experience level has different material with all possible interview questions and answers for Java, Spring Framework, Maven, Git, Spring Boot, Spring Security, Spring Data, GPA, Kafka, Microservices, Java coding questions, Stream API coding questions and many more. I have provided the link to get this in the below description. If someone need this material plus two real client enterprise projects for reference plus one-on-one -on -one lifetime doubt sessions and the reference to the big MNCs then they should check the interview preparation kit. I will provide the link for this as well in the description below. So now moving to our interview experience. Then they asked to explain how communication happens in microservices. So the microservices communicate using REST APIs, messages broker or GRPC. Services sends requests and receive response or publishes, subscribes to the events. Communication can be synchronous or asynchronous and ensuring smooth interaction between microservices. Then interviewer asks, can REST API use for asynchronous communication? If yes, how? 
सो यह स्ट्रेस ए पी आई कैन सपोर्ट एस एंड क्रॉस कम्युनिकेशन यूजिंग टेक्निक्स लाइक वेब हुक्स लॉन्ग पॉलिंग एंड वेब सॉकेट्स द क्लाइंट सेंड्स अ रिक्वेस्ट एंड प्रोसेस द रिस्पॉन्स लेटर वेन द सर्वर कम्प्लीट्स अ टास्क एंश्योरिंग नॉन ब्लॉकिंग कम्युनिकेशन एंड बेटर परफॉर्मेंस then he asked to explain the saga design pattern so this is important question so saga design pattern manage distributed transaction in microservices it breaks the transaction into the multiple steps where each step has a compensating action to undo changes if a failure occurs and ensuring data consistency across services then interviewer asked how to handle cascade failure in microservices so to handle cascade failure in microservices we should use circuit breakers to stop requests to failing services time out so avoid waiting indefinitely retries with limits and fallback mechanism to provide alternate response and ensuring system stability and resilience then there are the difference between clustered and non clustered index so a clustered index sorts and stores data physically in order improving read performance whereas a non clustered index creates a separate structure to store pointers to data and useful for multiple indexes but slower in retrieval compared to clustered indexes then he asks a difference between a view and table so a table stores data physically in the database while a view is a virtual table that displays data from one or more tables views do not store data but provides a way to simplify complex queries the interviewer asks how deployment works in java how pipeline code is written so java deployment involves building the code packaging it into a jar or file and deploying it to a server a pipeline automates is using tools like jenkins with steps like build test package and deploy for continuous delivery then he asks what are the different types of deployments so different types of deployments include shadow deployment basically this test new versions without affecting users canary deployment this release to a small group first blue green deployment this switch between environments and rolling deployment it gradually replace old versions then in the second technical round interviewer first asked to write a java code to reverse single link list so i will provide a solution link in the description okay then he asked let's say there is a link list where each node represent a character prove it palindrome through code so i will provide a solution link of this code as well then he asked to explain singleton design pattern and give its thread safe implementation so singleton design patterns ensures only one instance of a class exists to make it thread safe we can use synchronize in a get instance or double check locking this prevents multiple threads from creating different instances simultaneously and ensuring consistent behavior then he asked to explain difference between hash map linked hash map tree map with examples so hash map stores data in random order linked hash map maintains the order of the insertion and tree map sort keys in natural order we should use hash map for fast access we should use linked hash map for maintaining order and we should use tree map when sorting is needed then he asked to explain saga design pattern with real time example so the saga design pattern manage distributed transaction in microservices by executing a series of steps for example in an e-commerce system placing an order triggers payment inventory check and shipment service if one step fails compensating actions roll back changes then they asked to explain the difference between concurrent and synchronized hash map so concurrent hash map allows multiple threads to read and write safely without locking the entire map improving performance whereas synchronized hash map locks the entire map and allowing only one thread at a one time and making it slower in a multi threaded environment then they ask how to avoid deadlock in java so to avoid deadlock in java we should follow a consistent locking order we should use a try lock with timeouts minimize synchronized blocks and avoid nested locks detect and handle circular dependencies to prevent threads from waiting indefinitely then he asked to explain unique primary key and foreign key so unique key ensures all values in columns are different primary key uniquely identifies each record and doesn't allow nulls whereas foreign keys links two tables enforcing referential integrity by referencing the primary key in another table the interviewer asked to describe your experience with the query training so what tools and techniques do you use to identify and resolve performance issues so we should optimize sql queries by analyzing execution plans using explain analyze adding indexes and rewriting queries we should use tools like mysql workbench and pg admin to identify slow queries and resolve performance issues by reducing execution time
then he has to explain the difference between path variable and request param with example path variable extract values from url path whereas request param retrieves query per parameters from url for example path variable handles uh, slash user id slash id as user one whereas request parameter process user question mark id is equal to one by fetching the value from the query then he has a use of response body annotation so response body annotation in spring converts a methods return value into a json or xml response and send it to directly to the client it is used in rest apis to return data without rendering a view so guys this is all about nagaro java developer interview experience and don't forget to check interview preparation kit thank you